Applied Energy and Trend Center Engineering present the RWIS, optimizing well economics and assuring single relief well contingency. Before an offshore development is sanctioned, there is a lot of legwork that must be done by a multidisciplinary team to ensure production can be guaranteed, safety is upheld, and compliance with regulations are met. During this phase, operators must submit a conceptual field layout and basis of design that demonstrates that production targets can be met and sufficient barriers are put in place to mitigate risk. Asset manager Greg is about to embark on this laborious journey. He firstly tasks his development coordinator, Dave, to gather a team of reservoir and facilities engineers, drillers, geologists, and geoscientists to identify possible issues that could incur risk or affect the productivity of the well. To get the go-ahead, the field must be designed to meet the production target of 70 million standard cubic meter per day. The project must stay within a $450 million budget and the operator's internal policies mandate that the team must demonstrate that the well can be killed via a single relief well in the event of an uncontrolled hydrocarbon release. With this in mind, asset manager Greg and development coordinator Dave kick off a pre-feed study to build a case for project sanction. The team put forth a conventional field layout concept that consisted of 14 subsea wells and trees that were capable of meeting the required target field production rates. However, due to the costs associated with the drilling program, which were estimated to be around $700 million, and the amount of subsea hardware required, the team was unable to meet the target unit technical cost that was mandated for the project, and were told to go back and sharpen their pencil. Development coordinator Dave was now faced with a quandary. The criteria that we have to meet to get this field sanctioned seems impossible. If we must stay within budget while still ensuring a single relief well contingency, then that means we have to reduce the completion size of the well. But if we do that, then there is no way we can reduce our well count and still meet our overall production target. The two constraints seem to be working against each other. I don't see how we can make this work. Dave engages reservoir engineer Rachel to relook at the project economics. Well, with respect to production rates, the simple solution here is to increase the size of the wells. While it initially took 14 7 inch wells to meet the production target, the field could be developed with eight larger bore 9 and 5 8 inch wells instead. But if we do that, it is unlikely that single relief well contingency can be achieved. Hmm. Let me ask Derek. He's the drilling engineer on this project. He might be able to help. Rachel begins to explain the problem. Within a matter of minutes, Derek swiftly walks towards his desk and turns to Rachel. Now don't get too excited, but I attended a well control conference a few weeks back. There was a paper presented on single relief well contingency. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, here it is. Yes, it was a well control expert from Ad Energy that presented the paper. I remember he spoke about how a piece of subsea hardware that they had co-developed with Trendsetter was capable of quadrupling well kill injection rates via a single relief well. The relief well injection spool, or the RWIS as he called it, I think it could be worth a shot. Let's get those guys in to see if they can help us. A few weeks later, development coordinator Dave gathers the team to present their solution. Upon further analysis, we have found that not only can we achieve the desired well flow rates demanded by this project, but we can reduce the number of required wells from 14 to 8 by increasing the size of the completion bores. This also means that the overall cost of the project has been significantly reduced to the point that we are actually well within the proposed budget. On top of this, a well control simulation study performed by Ad Energy identified that the wells can in fact be killed with a single relief well if we contract access rights to the RWIS. So you're telling me that a piece of subsea kit is our golden ticket here? Yes, Greg, that's exactly what I'm saying. The RWIS is an enabler to achieve the desired high-rate well design and the key to unlocking this project. And without demonstration of access to this technology, there is no way that this project can be approved. The fact that the same well can be constructed with less tubulars by setting shallower shoes is a massive plus, and in this case, positively shifts the economics of our project. The reduced capex required and quicker return on investment rates are just merely added bonuses here. Greg turns to the team and looks at them in awe. Well, what are we waiting for? Get those guys back here and make this official. Asset manager Greg isn't the only one who can benefit from the RWIS. 
if you want to reduce CapEx costs and maximize production whilst complying with company policy and legislation. Contact us now for a suitability check.